Amen. That was beautiful. Thank you. Welcome to Mission Del Sol. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship today. If you're worshiping with us online, I encourage you to let us know that you're here by signing in on our virtual friendship pad or on Facebook so that we might all greet each other following worship today. If you are a visitor here, I encourage you to make your way to the welcome table where you'll find handmade crosses made by members of the church to guide you in your devotional time. Also, there is uh, prizes for all kids who finish, or adults, if you really want one, uh, uh, for kids who finish their activity pages during worship. During our worship time, we'll have a time for the young and young at heart to come forward and sit on these front steps, and afterwards they can return to their seats uh, to sit with their parents for the rest of the service. Let us be called to worship. Please rise in heart and mind and join me in our responsive call to worship based on Psalm 100 from the message. We applaud God. We sing in her presence. God made us. We didn't make them. So we say thank you. Our God who is sheer beauty and loyal forever. Please be seated. We live in a paradox. We wander and stumble through the wilderness of sin and brokenness, and yet we are guided by Jesus' infallible promise that no matter what we do or don't do, 
He forgives our wanderings and leads us in grace. With confidence in our guide, we confess our sins together, first in unison and then in silence. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in word and deed. Instead of trusting in your plans, we have trusted in our own plans. You have tried to mold us into who you have called us to be, and we fight against you. We have tried to live our lives on our own instead of focused on your will for this community and for ourselves, and we are sorry. In your mercy, forgive us what we have been, amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, now hear our silent prayers of confession. Amen. Jesus knows our wandering, and he loves us still, and he knows our brokenness, and he makes us whole. Look to our Savior, who promises amazing grace. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Be God. Let us rise to sing our praise. Many things divide us, but the peace of Christ is what unites us. Christ's pre peace brings people together, offers forgiveness, and shows grace. Let us share that peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Grace and peace be with all of you today. A few things that are going on in the life and ministry of the church. I hope that as you've been traveling this summer, you have been picking up, uh, you've been taking some photos with Sunny. 
um, on your vacations. And if you haven't had a chance to go anywhere or you keep forgetting Sunny, um, pick one up in the narthex and take them on your adventures. And uh, if you just needed, if you forgot your Sunny at home when you went on vacation, then uh, send them into Jennifer and she can add a Sunny to your photos. Um, I, hope, I also <laughs> hope that you uh, have noticed our wall of prayer in the narthex for all of our student teachers and administrators. I encourage you to take a look at that and keep those folks in your prayers as they head back to school this coming, in these coming weeks. We are, I think, still in need of some Meals on Wheels volunteers, so that's upcoming next week. Thank you, Jason. The weeks are starting to run together. Um, and so if you'd like to know more about how that works or what is needed, you can see Jason after church. Um, he would be happy to talk to you about it. But if you like to drive or you like to meet new people, this is an opportunity for you. We're also going to St. Mary's Food Bank this coming week on Thursday. We still have spots open if you would like to help. The um, need is great and it is warm, but it is warmer for others. So I encourage you to come join us as we pack up food and uh, send it off in folks' cars for those who are in need of help. We're also continuing our water drive, our water bottle drive for St. Mary's Food Bank. You can still bring in your cases of water and put it in the narthex, in the chapel, on the pallet. Um, they'll be picking those up here, I think, soon, and we'll be getting a fresh pallet because you guys have done really great getting water. Uh, lastly, um, I will be heading out on vacation this coming, the end of this week, so we have some guest preachers in the pulpit in the coming next three Sundays. I encourage you to um, come and enjoy some great worship, and if you have any questions or you need anything, uh, call Jennifer in the office and she will get a hold of me as needed, or get you to the right directions. I think that's all we have for announcements. I encourage you to see the Saturday email or the soundings for more things that are going on in the life and ministry of the church. But now I'd like to invite our young and young at heart to come forward for our children's message. How are you guys today? Good. So I have these bags, though. I have these bags here, and um, I want to know if you guys can figure out what's inside. So this is an opportunity for you to ask questions about what's inside, and I will answer yes or no, or give you my best estimate. But if you had to figure out what was inside this bag, hold on, let me make sure I know which one this is. <laughs> is it a Rice Krispie? No. What questions would you ask in order to figure out what is in this bag? It is edible. What else? It's pretty light. You want to feel? Yeah? It's not Skittles. What do you think? What's a question you might ask? It's not Oreos. It's not jelly beans. It's not a fruit, it's not candy, it's not a vegetable, it's not pasta, it's not a salad, it's not a candy, it's not a cake, it's not sweet, that's a good question. What's light and is not sweet and is not a fruit or a vegetable? It's not sour. It's prime? No, it's not prime. I think that would be heavier than this. I might want to shake it. It's not Lay's. It's chips. It's Doritos. <laughs> Pretty good job. I mean, when you start to give these questions, it's the red kind. The cheesy kind. You like the blue kind? You like the red kind? Yeah, let's try this one. Yep. It's heavier than the last one. It's 
It's not a drink. It is food. It's not chips. It's, it's not a vegetable. It's not a cucumber. It's not well. It could be considered candy, but not candy that comes in like a, a bar. It's not chocolate. It's not round. It comes in a box. It's not honey. <laughs> you have one more question, and then I'm going to tell you what it is. Because I think this one's pretty hard. Sometimes there, there's questions that you just don't know the answers to, right? Raw meat. It's not raw meat. <laughs> I promise you that. It would smell. What happens when you don't know the answer to things? You keep trying? You, I mean, like if I never told you what was in this bag, would you just keep thinking about it? Yeah. Sometimes that's how faith is, right? Sometimes there's questions that we can figure out about our faith. It's not sprinkles. <laughs> it could be a big container of sprinkles. It's not, though. It's in a box. It's not butter. That would melt. So, but sometimes there's questions that we don't have answers to. And in faith, there's a lot of questions that we don't know answers to. And so in our sermon today, we are answering a question that we don't have an answer to. We're answering the question about, is there, is Jesus the only way to God? Which is a big question. Like, do you have to know Jesus in order to know God? Some people say yes, and some people think that's a harder question. We don't know. It's kind of like what's in this bag. And we keep asking or looking or feeling or asking questions about it because as important about part of our faith is trying to figure it out, thinking about it. You want to hold it? We're going to set this question aside because I want to know if you know what's in this bag. Yeah? It feels the same? I think it's heavier than the last one. It's not the same. It's edible. It's not a Rice Krispie. <laughs> Do you want a Rice Krispie? Is that what? <laughs> it's not a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> it's a triangle? I don't, there's no triangles in this bag. There's no bag inside the bag. Well, there is two bags because the bags are see-through, so I had to double bag it. Any ideas? It's not a box. It's packets. It's not Skittles and it's not Legos. It's not M&M's. Not sour patch either. No. It's not Oreos or taffy. It's not a fruit roll up. It's not a bunch of Tootsie Rolls. But there is a bunch of the same thing in here. It's not trail mix and it's not peppermints. These are all really good ideas. Any ideas? Does anybody else have a question they want to know about the answer to this bag? It's not nuts. It's not cereal. It's not popcorn. It's heavier than popcorn. It's not candy hearts. She asked about that already. It's not grapes. It's not raisins. It is sweet. It's not M&M's or cherries. It's candy. It is dum-dums. It's a bag. It's a bag of dum dums. You after after the prayer, you guys can take one. Sometimes, if you get no, there's not. I'm not going to tell you what's in this one. You have to keep figuring it out. Think about it. You can think about it, and if you figure, yeah, no, then you know. 
So we've had a couple different things happen here, right? One that you guys figured out pretty easily. One that we didn't know the answers to. And one that's cheese. It's not cheese. And one that you got a lot of help for. It is a box. It's not just a box. So sometimes in our faith, we figure things out on our own. Sometimes we don't quite figure it all out, and we have to understand that there's a lot of mystery in our faith. And sometimes it takes a whole room of people to figure out what happens in our faith, to figure out the answers. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for being with us, being with us through, all through all the questions. Help us, Help us when there's a lot of mystery, lot of mystery. and we don't, know the we don't know the answer to keep trusting you. Keep trusting you. Amen. Okay, you guys can take a dumb dumb. Okay, you can tell your parents I'm okay. This morning's scripture reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be truly, to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to put into effect when the times reached their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything, in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and truth, open our hearts and minds. Use the humble words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts 
so that we might hear your word for us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Today is our last week in this series on questions we have for God. And together we've asked a lot of really hard questions. If God is joy, why am I so sad? Is there love and justice? Why does a loving God allow bad things to happen to good people? Why am I doing, what am I doing wrong when my life isn't turning out the way I want it to? Did Jesus really have to die? And what happens when we sing? Today's question is no less difficult as the last questions. How can we say Jesus is the only way to God? Now together we wrestled with some tough questions and struggled with the mysterious and unexplainable acts of God. And now I've saved this last question for the last one in hopes that as we've wrestled along the way, maybe I'd find a better answer to this question that I don't know. Or at least maybe you've heard I don't know from me enough that you would feel okay with this unknown answer. We could just say, I don't know, and head over to Mission Hall and have some refreshments, but that's not really enough when this kind of question weighs so heavily in our world today. This is a question that we've all asked and wondered about because the answer tells us not just about who we are and our relationship with God, but what it means to live in our world today and who, how we act with the people in our world today. Wrapped up in this question are other mysterious questions like, where is God in other religions like Muslims and Buddhism and Hinduism and Judaism? And does it really matter if we're Christians at all? Some of those questions get really personal, like, who am I gonna see when I get to heaven? Or does my family who doesn't go to church, will they have eternal life? Or harder, will my friends of other religions be in heaven? But the biggest questions are ones that uh, wrap around who really is this God that we, who loves us unconditionally and cares for us always. And if there are some of those answers, if there are someone, if they are someone who answers to God in every religion. Or does my faith even matter at all? And how do I live my life today? And are there actually unforgivable sins that, you know, if I did that one thing, that then I would be not a part of this holy community? Or at least some of those are mine. These are the all good questions that every one of us wrestle with. But now the tensions about these questions seem even more pivotal right now. If we were to answer these questions, would we better understand, if we were to have an answer to these questions, we would better understand our relationship with each other, with our community, with our nation, with our world, especially in this time when divisions seem to be so great. I don't know about you, but I don't like it when there's mystery as the answer, or that I don't know is the answer. I want to hear sure, right, wrong, black, white answers. I want to know the amount of grace that I've received and the amount of grace everyone else has received. I want to be able to point my finger with confidence that God is on my side about my actions and everyone else's. Well, the problem is that when we want that, sometimes we try and find our own answers. Even though we don't know the real truth from God directly, or the Bible, and how, the, how this is created, we find our own way to answer the questions about these mysterious ways of God. For example, if you want a world where men are in charge and women are not, I'm sure religion can help you find that. If you want to live in Barbie land, I'm sure you can find that in the Bible too. If you want a world where some people are wealthy and other people are not, religion can help you find that too. If you want a world where justice is, the an is answered based on one view or another, religion can help you get there. Sometimes we shape our own religion or perspectives without even realizing that every time we do that, we've drawn in a line in the sand about who we are and who God is too. 
We think we're doing something good by giving shade to God or helping us have control or understanding about this mysterious God who makes decisions that just don't make sense. Like, why would he want those people and me, who's pretty amazing, to be in the same community? Right? Why would God want to love all people? Why wouldn't God want every religion? Why would it matter what religion is a part of someone's faith journey? Wouldn't God care about every single one of them? We want to know who we are and who our neighbors are. And that's when religion and our faith become threatened because deep down, we want good, the good people to be with us in heaven no matter what they believe and the bad people to not be. We want our family to be there no matter how faithful they've been. So questions like this start rising up inside of us are no longer just abstract theoretical conversations that we all had in seminary about topics which we wish we had an answer to but we really don't, to questions that touch our very souls and change everything. What makes it even harder is that the answer to this question and many other questions we've asked during this series have political, economic, and personal consequences. They affect our lives, they affect our community, they affect how we treat each other. So we're going to be willing to go all the way to the mat to fight for what we believe about God and because it will change how we live today, who we vote for, what kind of jobs we have, how we spend our money, where we spend our time, who our friends are, and what we think about our future. These are big questions. But here's the challenge with all this, that no matter how many questions we ask or how many answers we have or don't have about our faith, when we decide on an answer in place of mystery, we have put limits on God. We've put up boundaries to make sure that God fits into a political, social, or economic way that we think is right. And before we know it, we've created the God that we want, not the one who lived, died, and rose for all. And now, the God we know who dwells in the mysterious answers of scripture that says that the resurrected Jesus lives in, with, around, through, and for us is suddenly in a different place. Our life on earth includes just a part of Jesus or a version of Jesus that isn't for everybody because it's only the way one perspective lives. We forget that Jesus chooses all of us. In the midst of this mystery, our text today, Paul attempts to remind the Ephesians the importance of this mystery and also the things that we do know about this triune God and who we are in relationship to God. Now, we might not have the answer to how we can say Jesus is the only way to God, but we do know these things. We know that God's plan God has a plan for our lives and this world and it is bigger than we can ever imagine it to be. That the plan started long before any of us were ever here. We know that God says yes to us before we say yes to God. We know that God wants to be in relationship with creation enough that God chose to come to earth and live and die and rise for us. We know that God decided that this was the way he would save us and be in relationship, was through Jesus Christ. And that somehow, in some mysterious way, we are brought into the triune God through Jesus Christ. And that it's like we put on another piece of clothes or Jesus lives inside of us. It's like a second skin that helps us to live differently and calls us to be different and helps us to communicate with God in a way that never was before. We know that this is our way to eternal life. We also believe that God offers eternal life to all people, that we are responsible to accept it and respond to it through a life of faith and a relationship with God. 
That's all we really know. The truth is that the Bible gives no indication about other faiths or God's promise to them beyond the promise to the Israelites that they are God's chosen people. But God also didn't just call one group of people, but throughout various times, he called on other communities and other people of other groups and invited them into this faith. We also know that God loves all people and wants to be in relationship with every part of creation, that there's not one part of creation that God rejects. The answer is hard because it leaves a lot of mysteries and unknowns that we wish we had answers to in our complicated, sometimes overwhelming, and hard world that we live in. We want to have answers that are gonna guide our political, economic, and relational world. Which is why the best moments, Richard Rohr says, is when we actually look for God in all of us. Not just our favorite people, not just our least favorite people, but all people. All we have to do is pause long enough for more expected answers or judgments or hopeful feelings in order to see the world the way God sees it, to see the light that dwells inside each person. We see it when the holy moments happen of communication and relationship. We see it when there's grace given and not judgment when we believe in the goodness that dwells inside of us, like the spark of the Almighty God, and not just all the things that are going wrong. When we see hopeful moments, and not just everything that's terrible. When we see the power of God in the monsoon rainstorm, and the delicate intricacies of God's creation in the circle of life. If we pause long enough, we can see the light that doesn't just dwell in one or another person, but in all, because God created all. And no, that's not really an answer to this question. But it is enough to say that God is with all of us. It's enough to say that Jesus hasn't abandoned you or I. It's enough to say that God is in this world, whether it feels hard or impossible or wonderful or great. And friends, as much as I want an answer to this question, I just don't think we're supposed to have one. We're supposed to trust that when God calls us, we respond with knowing that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, because we know God will be with us through it all, that we have eternal life, that we are loved by God just like every other person on this earth. That God created all people. And really, when we get down to it, that should tell us everything we really need to know. That should tell us everything about how we're supposed to live in this world. The answers to all those political, economic, social, relational questions that we have that we think deciding how God will answer is going to tell us. Because the truth is that if we truly live with the grace and truth and love of our Lord Jesus Christ who lives in and through us every single day, that should give us every direction we should need to go. So my last answer is, I don't know. But as we navigate this world ahead of us, all the twists and turns, I'm not sure this answer really matters. What matters is that we're in it, that God is in it with us, that we're going to do our very best to live out that grace and love that Jesus shares with us, with every person we meet. And hopefully, Along the way, we do see the light of Christ in all of us. Amen. And with all those who faithfully come before us, let us stand and profess our faith, saying the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers that have come to us in the prayer chain or to me include prayers for Cheryl, a friend of the McKenna's who has COVID, prayers for Sally Appleby who also has COVID, prayers for Reverend Michael Weller, a friend of Dorothy Hansen's who has a brain tumor, prayers for Joe and Karen, family members of the McKenna's who both have, have a brain tumor, and prayers of gratitude from Liz Johns who's recovering from procedure yesterday. Let us go to God in prayer. Jesus, we turn to you to look for the answers to our prayers for those who need healing mercies, who need comfort from grief and support during their struggles. We have come to you with prayers for our world as we continue to fight in wars and health crises for the creation and the land and animals hurting from the fire and community in our community preparing for a new school year. And we know every time we lift our voices to you, you hear our prayers. Thank you for answering us. Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for reminding us about who we are and whose we are. And yet we still doubt and question and wonder about where you are and what you're doing in our very lives today. We ask now that you fill our souls with your refreshing water of the Holy Spirit so that once again we know that you are with us. 
So much of what delights and troubles us happens on the surface. It's the moment to moment to do list, the worries about tomorrow, the questions with a friend, and the quiet moments that are just too fleeting. We've watched others with longing for life in greener pastures and easier situations, and we confess that we've wanted what others have, that we've hoped for something more instead of just recognizing what you give us. We're sorry. Turn us towards you, O oh God. Give us the patience of a sunrise coming over the mountains, the freedom found in thousands of stars in the night sky and the rhythmic ease of our daily routines that shape us, that energize our spirit, give us rest, and settle us every single day. Lord, hear us as we lift to you the prayers that lay upon our hearts, those spoken aloud or said in silence. Lord, in your mercy. 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 Lord, we lift up to you, Cheryl and Sally, and ask that you bring healing mercies to them along with all those who have COVID right now. Bring your support and guidance as you walk, walk alongside Michael and Joe and Karen as they fight brain tumors. Lord, continue to remind us of the blessings that come through your presence and your healing. Thank you for Liz, for all the people and ways that you will use her this year. Dwell in us, gently offering glimpses of where you are already showing up in our lives, when the path seems strange or different or unknown, when we keep trying to find answers to things that we don't know answers to. Nourish us so that we can find your comfort in a friendly face. Help us to see how to protect us when we're afraid, guide us when we're lost, shine a light when we're searching, and bless us each day that feels anything but blessed. And when we are unsure of where you are, remind us that you are our Lord and Savior who lives in us and with us and through us and around us. The one we know as father and mother, neighbor, as a partner in life, and our God who leads us back to this prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Whenever we give of our time, talents, or financial resources, we are putting our trust in God above our way or another's. Join me in giving through our online giving webpage found in the link or QR code in the offering plates found in the narthex.
Jesus, use these gifts so that all might know about your way. Amen. It's a lot of questions we've asked. Not a lot of answers, really. But we have come to a few conclusions that I think are important. The reminder that no matter what happens to you or to this community or to this world, that God is with us in it. That God loves us unconditionally no matter what you do or don't do. That we are here to be a support to each other. To remind each other of the light that lives within each of us. That God light that exists in every person that God created. So let's go from this place with a lot more questions, maybe. I do. But knowing the truth of who God is and who we are. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you. May the love of God the Father surround you. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.